IT, forging IT security experts. Secure Ninja. Hey everyone, I'm Alicia Webb with Secure Ninja TV and I'm here at Hacktivity 2012 in Budapest, Hungary. Hacktivity is the largest IT security festival in Central and Eastern Europe and it has been amazing. We're speaking with so many awesome people. Right now I'm about to talk with Shaquille Tufal. He is the Federal Practice Director of HP Enterprise Security and he's also one of the three keynote speakers here at Hacktivity. Thank you so much for speaking with us. Absolutely, my pleasure. Definitely. Now, you were speaking um, here at Activity about software threat modeling. What on earth is that? So, software threat modeling is something that we've been doing at smaller scales uh, by doing security penetration testing and secure architecture review, but it's becoming even more important because software as a standalone application is becoming more rare. Most of our software is becoming interconnected through probably heard of cloud and uh, different uh, devices. There's a big deal with BYOD, bring your own device in organizations now, because people can bring their own you know, uh, smartphones and their iPads and uh, different methods and ways of connecting to infrastructure of organizations as well as operating software through multiple channels and, and devices and, and uh, browsers and operating systems. So now your software is being accessed by so many different methods and ways of, of connection as well as interconnecting with other software applications in the, the uh, infrastructure of the organization that we do not understand the weaknesses and, and the threats that are in our software because we don't know what our infrastructure looks like. We don't know how the software is uh, uh, sending data, what we call data in transit. We don't know where our data is at rest. We have a few database servers here and there, but the database servers are interconnected to other applications and there's a lot of shared resources. And so one of the uh, most important things that uh, any organization worried about enterprise level security should do is once in a while go back and take a look at their entire software infrastructure from a holistic high level overview and then dig down deeper to see where the data is, where are the assets that you're trying to protect and then do a software threat model to find weaknesses and threats against the system so that you can mitigate them. Definitely. Um, can you give us any real world examples of when software threat modeling would be useful? Well, any cloud-based system or any type of application that is more of an enterprise application where it's used by multiple entities in the organization as well as interconnected with different parts of uh, the organization's software and infrastructure would be an ideal candidate. I mean, if you take a look at any web-based application, uh, whether it's uh, email or uh, some type of application that um, has a specific purpose. I, I use an example of, uh, for example, an airline. You know, I, I fly United a lot, and if you go to united.com, that uh, software that is running you know, uh, on their servers and, and that you access through your browsers can also be accessed through your iPhone or Android or Windows Mobile. There's apps for it as well, so you can go through the browser as well as you can download the app and you can connect and you can do your uh, booking, reservations, change your seats, cancel flights, uh, you know, even change your itinerary and, and much, much more. You, know, you can purchase baggage before your flight. And so there's transactions, there's information, and this is not just one application. It's probably a conglomerate of multiple applications with multiple software interconnected to each other, all working synergistically. But when we do security, we do penetration testing, for example, against the web application, or we go in and, and do a code review or some type of security audit. We're probably just looking at a piece of that entire software architecture, mm -hmm. not the entire architecture, because you know when you do an audit, you don't have time and money to, you know, work on everything that software is, is, is doing and, and connected to. And uh, the other problem is, is that it, it's just so complex 
that you have to kind of look at it piece by piece. But what you can do is you can get a high level overview of what the software uh, looks like, how it works together, mm -hmm. and look for obvious weaknesses and look for you know, um, lack of security mechanisms in areas that should be protected. Look for back doors or um, connections that are untrusted and make sure that you have, you know, again, security mechanisms or input validation before data comes in or out of the system to prevent hackers from using the, the typical ways of exploitation. Right. Do you think most companies are kind of overlooking this whole situation and the way the software all works together? Well, it's not that I think, I know. Oh. <laughs> but <laughs> I mean, I've worked both in the commercial and the government space, yeah. and I have seen organizations, uh, small and large, yeah. uh, developing software and, and, and producing products, and uh, some of them do have good processes, and there is some inspection, and, and once in a while mm -hmm. I'll see a true software threat model exercise or a secure architecture review, but it's really the exception, and, right. and that's the problem. Definitely. Um, and during your presentation, you were talking um, at length about a case study, the Sony hack, the infamous Sony hack. Um, yeah. What can you tell us about that and software threat modeling? Well, they must, they must love me at this point, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but, you know, uh, I haven't heard anything bad yet, and it's all public information. Yeah. But, uh, uh, you know, um, there's a lot of information on the web on the Sony hack, but very briefly, uh, it... it was a number of different attack methods, mm -hmm. but the big one was SQL injection. And my pet peeve with SQL injection is that uh, SQL syntax and SQL scripting has been around for at least two decades or more, mm -hmm. right? It's a, it's a method for applications to uh, talk to databases and retrieve information from databases and, and many other advanced functions. The problem is, is that we know how to protect against SQL injection. We know how to uh, secure our code to prevent SQL injection. Mm -hmm. Yet, some of the most uh, you know, enormous, amazing attacks that we've had in the past two or three years, with millions of records being stolen, such as Sony and, and many others, like Heartland Payment Systems and TJ Maxx and, and uh, PBS and, and even the US Senate, was hacked through SQL injection. And it's just a crime you know, not to be uh, secure with your code to prevent SQL injection. And so Sony's SQL injection was particularly bad because not only did they attack uh, once, they attacked 21 times successfully. Mm -hmm. And so they were able to break into the Sony PlayStation network and then from there, they did reconnaissance and footprinting. You know, a good thief always looks for ways to understand you know, the threats and, and weaknesses of your system. And uh, they're actually doing threat modeling, yeah. right? And if we had done a threat model, or if Sony had done the threat model to be more accurate, then they may have found some of these weaknesses and then possibly put security mechanisms to protect against those attacks. But, uh, 177 million records uh, stolen um, and uh, possibly more. I've heard of uh, upwards of 300 million records stolen. Uh, I know that they've had over $130 million of, of actual cost in um, uh, loss of income as well as uh, uh, the cost of fixing the problems. And You've also got the problem of, you know, their stock price was hurt yeah. by it. Uh, they're probably recovering a little bit, but, you know, uh, it, it went down almost 30% in the first uh, few months. And then you have the loss of private data. I mean, people's names, addresses, credit card numbers, uh, all kinds of PII and private information. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Sony PlayStation, a lot of kids play that. So, yeah. uh, you know, having children's names and information and private information stolen is even worse. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, again, it's something that was completely preventable. And, um, you know, there's a big lessons, lesson learned there, but sometimes we need that wake-up call, I guess. Definitely. Hopefully Sony does recover fully from that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, in your presentation, you mentioned the total or the estimated total financial impact of, because of the Sony hack um, versus the estimated preventative costs. Um, so run that by me again. So some estimates by um, organizations like Gartner or Forrester, I've, I've heard of upwards of 
24 billion dollars oh of God. total impact mm -hmm. you know uh, whether it's branding or trust or, or actual financial loss and so I mean that's a huge number what I was comparing it to was that uh, for example and uh, whether it's HP or a different company I've worked for uh, a typical scan to find SQL injection whether it's static code review or dynamic code analysis can be as little as ten thousand dollars right so if they had done a scan to find SQL injection problems in their application, and I'm not saying it's 10,000, it could be more, it definitely would be a lot less yes. than $24 billion. <laughs> definitely. How often would you recommend uh, that a company does a scan for SQL injection? Well, it's not just SQL injection, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's scanning for software vulnerabilities. And, and, you know, software runs in multiple platforms, and so, we're looking at you know, scanning during development or construction of code, scanning during the QA and testing lifecycle, scanning before it goes to production, you know, uh, and reviewing it after production. So, and it's not just scanning, and I don't want to say it's just automated tools. It's both automated uh, tools that will help you know, speed up or expedite the process of finding vulnerabilities. It's manual review, it's uh, looking at um, areas of the software through uh, manual analysis and uh, using automated tools where it makes sense to speed up the process because you don't have unlimited time or unlimited money to do security on, on, on everything. So you need to kind of balance uh, how much time you have and what you want to spend on. And, the main thing is, is that if you build this into a process, you know, software or any product has a life cycle, right? So in software, we call it the software development life cycle, SDLC. And if you build security touch points in the SDLC and you do that consistently, then those different activities, security activities, touch points, checkpoints, whatever you want to call them, will improve the quality of your software. So things like SQL injection and other common software vulnerabilities, you know, there's, there's tons of them. Uh, you know, OWASP top 10 is uh, a list that comes out every few years and, and uh, you have SQL injection every single time on that. You have cross-site scripting, you have buffer overflows, you know, other types of software vulnerabilities that are there. You know, uh, CWE SANS comes out with the top 25 software errors. And so these are solved problems that still show up over and over again. And so again, the pet peeve is, you know, the new zero day attacks or the new unique advanced attacks, you know, you may not have seen before or you don't have any type of mitigation, but get the software to the point where your baseline is at least covering the known vulnerabilities that uh, can occur in, in software and uh, limit those or, or mitigate them to the best of your ability. Definitely. Yeah. So what was kind of like your motivation to come all the way to Hacktivity to discuss this topic? And what do you hope to get out of sharing it, basically? Sure. Well, you know, the goal is, I've spoken probably about 12 or 15 times this year, and my goal is not to just talk to the same group of folks mm -hmm. all the time. And anytime I'm able to speak to a new community or uh, to actually learn from another uh, community or another organization, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's commercial, federal, nonprofit, or a different country, you know, that's the way that I learn about different types of uh, vulnerabilities and different specific issues uh, for organizations or geographical areas to improve my knowledge and, and uh, improve our team uh, to become better at solving these problems. And then sharing what we've seen and what we know with the community as well. So I mean, that, that was the main reason for doing this. And, and yeah. it's also just a, a beautiful city and uh, nicest people in the world. Absolutely. And uh, I'd love to come back here. Absolutely. I'm sure a lot of the attendees here uh, got a great benefit out of hearing you speak. It was definitely an interesting presentation. Yeah, and I certainly did as well. Where can IT security professionals find out more about this topic, software threat modeling? Well, so the presentation that I did this morning um, is available, or will be available, hopefully in the next uh, few days at www.hacktivity.com. Awesome. And so you can download the PDF and uh, my contact information will be in there. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me and 
um, you know, it's, it's just uh, a great topic. So um, definitely look into it. Very cool. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for speaking with us, Shaquille. It was a pleasure. Thank you. I enjoyed the conversation. Definitely. It was an absolute pleasure. And enjoy the rest of your time here in Budapest. Make sure you don't miss any of our videos from Hectivity this year and don't miss anything else that's coming up in the future by subscribing to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash secure ninja. Also like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter so you don't miss any of our news. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Alicia Webb reporting to you from Budapest, Hungary. Secure Ninja Shorts are brought to you by SecureNinja.com, a world leader in information security and IT training and certification. Our master instructors will help build you into a highly skilled and marketable security professional. SecureNinja.com, forging IT security experts.